Kevin Haggerty with David Frame talking about his book on decision making, framing decisions. And uh, looking at chapter two, uh, some interesting points raised here. Um, you know, decision making is a routine thing. Uh, people do it all the time, every day. Is it, is it really something we, we need to uh, read up on and study uh, in order to, uh, to make decisions? Uh, for the great bulk of decisions that uh, you and I make on a daily basis, uh, no, you certainly don't need a book where humans are natural decision makers in that sense. So uh, when I go to uh, uh, McDonald's, uh, I don't need to do, uh, put together some complex algorithm to determine whether to buy a Big Mac uh, or a, a quarter pounder hamburger. Okay, so. Most of the decisions we make on a day-by-day -day basis on what route to take to the office, uh, what shirt to put on in the morning, these things that occur uh, automatically. They don't require a careful study, they don't require careful analysis. So, uh, 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 however, when you deal with problems that are more complex, that are larger than that, that have uh, implications, uh, then in that case, uh, your natural decision-making capabilities aren't going to serve you very well. At that point, you really de do need to uh, uh, take a look at some of the tools, techniques, perspectives that uh, formal decision-making uh, theory and practice can provide you. I notice that uh, you, uh, you talk about something you call mindful decisions of consequence. Uh, and and uh, it seems that, that you're, you're saying that problems can be both well-defined and ill-defined. Can you elaborate on those? Okay. Well, uh, yeah, the, the book, uh, over and over, I think uh, probably every single chapter uh, uh, I have in the book, I remind the reader that our focus isn't just on making sort of ho-hum, trivial decisions. Okay, a lot of, uh, if you take a look at a traditional operations research book, the examples you have, things like the diet problem on uh, how do you allocate food in a hospital to save money for the hospital, and uh, some of these other, you know, classic operations research types of problems, uh, that we have uh, wind up being pretty simple problems in the greater scheme of things. Okay, they, again, they can be well, they're well-defined problems and they have clear-cut solutions and they have optimal solutions to boot. Okay, so uh, again, I think uh, you can have decisions of consequence uh, that operations research addresses. In fact, if you're talking about uh, a major manufacturing uh, problem, an optimization problem for how to lay out a production line, and you're using uh, some of the tools and techniques, the mathematical tools and techniques of decision sciences, you're going to have a much better uh, factory than if you try to do all this intuitively. So, uh, so uh, uh, basically, a decision of consequence would be a decision that uh, uh, has impacts. Okay, it's a decision that's more complex. It's not a trivial decision like, what shirt should I wear? Okay, now, uh, uh, what I do in my book, though, is I even go beyond traditional uh, decisions of consequence that OR, Operations Research, deals with, and my attention is focusing in the book on that huge array, okay, huge array of, uh, of uh, problems that we face uh, in, in our, as decision makers that are ill-defined, where they don't have clear-cut solutions, okay, where if you have a solution that's optimal for one set of players, uh, may be suboptimal for others, and they resent it, and they're going to work against the first group uh, to make sure that their will prevails. Okay, so uh, and, and, and when I talk about decisions of consequence, uh, I'm not only ignoring the uh, more sort of straightforward, small, trivial decisions, I'm also saying even when we deal with large, complex decisions, okay, that are, if, to the extent they're well defined, we can, we can solve those through mechanical means. I call it mechanical decision making. Go ahead and apply operations research and figure out the best uh, allocation of, uh, of resources to a particular process. Okay. However, looking at all the other decisions we have that don't have clear uh, solutions to them, then we realize part of what makes them messy is that you have multiple stakeholders, you have contending stakeholder interests, you have politics, you have ethical problems, you have a moral dimension. Uh, uh, again, there's, there's all these other things that we need to take into account that aren't taken into account with traditional decision-making fair. Okay, and in, uh, in Chapter 2, you... Uh observe that uh, decision making is not a uh, it's not a discipline in a conventional sense but that by increasing awareness of alternate perspectives on making decisions 
decision makers can strengthen their capabilities. Um, let's let's try this, if I if I may. Can I throw some different uh, walks of life or uh, areas uh, at you? And uh, let's hear your take on uh, uh, how decision making might differ. Uh, okay. What about? Uh, well, first of all, in, in traditional decision science, you've, you've said uh, quantitative techniques, uh, these kinds of tools and, and right. projections. Yeah. Well-defined problems, the problem is to have solutions. Okay. okay. So, uh, isn't that uh, more or less what uh, economists already do anyway, or is there something different in, in economics? Well, e a large part of uh, economics uh, uh, is very, very closely allied to what we have in decision sciences, uh, and economics itself is a are very heavily dependent on quantitative methods because, I mean, just think about it, in economics you have goods, uh, you have the prices of goods, that's a, that's a number, okay, you have quantities of goods and services, quantities of materials, those are numbers, okay, we have uh, revenue, and, and so on, so you know, economics has uh, lots and lots of numbers and it lends itself to quantitative analysis, and so a big portion of, uh, of, uh, of uh, what quantitative economics does is very closely allied to decision sciences. And you find people who are members of a decision science society, society might also be uh, members of, a quanti of an economic society and vice versa. Okay, so, uh, uh, so you do have a lot of overlap between the two. But within economics, you also have um, alternate perspectives. Okay, they don't contradict the initial one, but they go beyond the initial that are tied to different schools of thought. Okay, so you have the Keynesians will have uh, certain assumptions and presumptions in, in their decision models, okay, based on Keynesian theory, okay, the monetarists have their uh, assumptions and presumptions based on monetary theory. Uh, we even have non-quantitative uh, uh, parts of, uh, of uh, economics, for example, political economy, which is focusing on, uh, uh, on, the, uh, on what we call welfare issues. Okay, now I'm not talking about welfare in, in, in the sense of uh, public policy, we're talking about uh, welfare means the, the, the well-being of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of a society and its economy. So they deal with more qualitative types of issues. Okay, but what about public policy? You just mentioned that. Um... Okay. Well, public, that's good. I mean, public policy, if you think about it, you know, reflect on it, public policy is about uh, uh, elected officials and uh, uh, civil servants Okay, who are professionals whose job is uh, to uh, serve the interests of the public. Okay, public policy is all about decision making. And so the public policy discipline has its whole set of tools and techniques to deal uh, with decision making. And of course those tools and techniques focus much more heavily on, on the, uh, the political dis uh, dimension of making decisions. Uh, social psychology? Okay, clearly you've done your homework on that one because uh, uh, that's not a discipline people would normally pull out of the air to, to ask about, uh, but you're right, because social psychology uh, actually uh, was engaged in uh, uh, looking at how people make decisions uh, a long time ago. Okay, social psychology uh, as a discipline began in the 1930s, largely under the direction of a Turkish fellow who came to the United States, uh, Muzaffer Sharif, and uh, his research and his studies were based on uh, groups of people and uh, social pressure to make decisions one way versus another. Okay, and to a certain extent, to a large extent, social psychology is looking at decision making, but from the perspective of what are the group influences, okay, the social influences, the group influences that uh, cause people to make decisions in one way versus another. What about psychology? Uh, psychology, yeah, clearly, uh, uh, psychologists are concerned uh, with uh, decision making, but I don't think that would be the term they use. They won't say, uh, uh, how do people make decisions per se, that's our interest. Uh, I guess their, their terminology would be, is uh, how do people make choices? So I think uh, in psychology, uh, certainly psychologists are interested in how people make choices in life. And then uh, what they're doing though, is they're viewing this from the point of view of various uh, uh, some uh, you know, well-known paradigms, psychological paradigms, for example, uh, the Freudian perspective, which gets into things like the unconscious, okay, the conscious versus the unconscious, it gets into various pathologies, neuroses, psychoses, and, and how, do, how do these kinds of uh, elements of the Freudian system, how do they come to bear on the choices people make in their lives? Uh, okay, an alternative, uh, uh, well-known uh, uh, paradigm is the behaviorist paradigm, first 
uh, or I guess it wasn't first postulated, but it was its, it's major adherent. Okay, proponent was uh, B. F. Skinner. Okay, and so the Skinner the Skinnerian behaviorist approach uh, is concerned with how people make choices, but it's based on uh, on a whole different uh, framework. Okay, so you have uh, again within psychology, uh, definitely there's a, a tremendous interest on uh, the, how people make choices, and but the focus is on the psychological dimension of making choices. Interesting. What what about our legal system? Does it have its own perspective on decision making? Well, I don't. Uh, yeah, I mean, the legal system is all about decision making again. Okay, I mean, the legal system. I mean, just think uh, think about what is it a what is a jury doing? Okay, uh, during a trial. Okay, they're listening to the arguments of the prosecutor and the defendant. They're collecting all this information. Okay, they're listening to the arguments, and then they put themselves, uh, the, uh, the, the court sets aside a, a jury room where they sit down, they discuss the merits of the, uh, of the two sides, the arguments made by the two sides, they discuss the merits and credibility of the, uh, of the information they have, and then they make a decision. And we call that decision a verdict. Uh, same thing with judges. Judges, uh, very often, many trials are, uh, are held by, uh, uh, before a judge, not before a jury, and the judge goes through the same process as a jury. And during the course of the trial, the, the judge has to make many, many judgment calls as to what's admissible, what isn't admissible as evidence, what, uh, uh, whether the, the attorneys are operating within the, uh, the, 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 the proper rules of, uh, of uh, say, of a prosecutor, prosecutorial questions, or uh, the uh, defend, uh, defending attorney's uh, 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 objections, these kinds of things. So uh, the legal system is uh, very, very heavily focused on uh, decision making. Yes? I notice in chapter two that you also uh, write about neuroscience. Well, that's the uh, right now the uh, uh, the uh, uh, perspective of neuroscience on uh, decision making is sort of the, the hot button. Okay, and that's also possibly uh, the great hope of uh, of uh, 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 providing more guidance on what effective decisions and decision making is for the future. And what's happened with uh, neuroscience is. Uh, that in the last 10, 15 years or so, uh, we have uh, neuroscientists working with uh, 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 neuropsychologists uh, looking at the brain to see uh, how does the brain function when, when humans make decisions. And uh, one of the reasons this has become very hot is that in the last uh, 15 years or so, a tool has emerged called FMRI, Functional Magnetic Resonance Imaging. And this is a, a, a fMRI, that's a, those uh, brain maps that you see on TV and the science TV shows and all that, where the brain lights up red uh, uh, when a, a part of the brain is being used. So there's uh, many, many studies being carried out even now, even as we're, we're, we're discussing uh, decision making, many studies, experiments being carried out where uh, uh, neuroscientists and neuropsychologists are uh, mapping uh, how the brain functions uh, when it makes decisions under different circumstances. Okay, so all these perspectives, uh, it seems that uh, they have their own ways of making decisions that, uh, that go beyond what the traditional decision science uh, starts with. Um, is, there a, is there an interdisciplinary approach, or would these areas uh, benefit from uh, learning from each other and, and combining some of those approaches? Well, I don't think uh, at, this, at the present time uh, you, uh, uh, what we call the... Uh, Again, I have to be careful because decision science itself, the term decision science, is actually referring to a very narrow range of activity. So the dis discipline of decision science isn't about decision making broadly defined. It's only about uh, focused on decisions that are well defined, that have solutions, that you can compute optimal solutions. So uh, in point of fact, we don't really have a, a decision making discipline. Uh, and uh, certainly, uh, again, one of my motivating, the motivating forces in my writing this book is to try to bring together uh, the insights on decision making that come from a, ver a variety of different disciplines. And I think by looking at what uh, other players are doing uh, uh, and, and picking what makes sense and, and basically pushing aside stuff that may not be so valuable, uh, I think uh, that we'll come up with a stronger, stronger approaches to uh, making decisions. Well, thank you for sharing these insights. Okay.